I had managed to develop an eating disorder throughout all of this. Um, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, clinical depression, which I had suffered from for most of my life, and ended up finding lumps in both of my breasts, which was um, the rock bottom for me. That's when I decided that I didn't want to be here anymore and that I had given it a good shot, but it was time for me to go. And so um, that night really was the last night of my life as I knew it and the first day of the life that you see me living now. Welcome to the Betty Rocker Show, the place to be to nourish your mind, love your body, and rock your life. Welcome back, Rockstar. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have such an amazing guest with such a deeply moving transformational journey that I personally relate to a lot, and I know I won't be the only one. My guest today, Cynthia Garcia, is a celebrity nutritionist, life coach, best-selling author of The Hungry Hottie Cookbook, and you may have actually seen her on Khloe Kardashian's Revenge Body, where she serves as the official nutritionist for the show, or on Dr. Phil, The View, The Doctors, or Dr. Oz, to name a few. She is the founder of the Institute for Transformational Nutrition, a modern-day coaching school for forward-thinking coaches, and the creator of the Transformational Trauma Technique, a technique that she developed to overcome the trauma in her own past and to help her clients overcome it in theirs. This powerful technique has been used successfully for over a decade all over the globe and is taught exclusively at the Institute for Transformational Nutrition. Now, Cynthia didn't start out with much in her corner to help her become who she is today, which is part of why it's so empowering seeing the amazing success that she is. And when I say success, I mean she is a thriving, fulfilled woman. She is happily married, is a devoted mother. She takes the best care of herself. She contributes to many important conversations in the world, and she runs an amazing business that impacts many and fulfills her life purpose. Something I find really powerful in transforming pain and trauma into a powerful force for good in our lives is the impact that telling our stories has. And not just the stories we have to tell, but the way we tell them. So if you're looking for inspiration and motivation, today's episode is for you. If you've ever felt like life was just too big to carry, or like you could never change or get away from the past, or like the decks were stacked against you, today's episode is for you too. So join me in welcoming our amazing guest to today's show. Oh my gosh, Cynthia! I feel like I need to sing your name. That's how happy I am to see you. <laughs> Can you sing it? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think I was trying to in my way, but Cynthia, welcome to the show. It is just such an honor to have you here, and it's so fun that you're here. I'm so happy to see you. Yay, welcome. Yeah, likewise. I'm I'm so happy we're we're doing this. I know we've had such deep, long conversations over the years, and I feel like they've just evolved and, and went through so many down so many rabbit holes. And so I feel like uh, I told you before, you know, I feel like we could have our own show just talking and hanging out because there's so much to talk about. So this is so fun that we're officially doing it. It feels good. Yeah, it feels really good to, to, to be able to spend time with you and also to call you a friend um, because I remember when I when we first encountered each other, there was a sort of feeling each other out where it was like, yeah. are we going to be allies? And we yeah. quickly decided that yes, we were. And when you look at the very, a lot of the similarities in our backgrounds, it makes mm -hmm. sense why we would have had our guard up, right? We have, I ha I've had my guard up to people for years and it's yeah, taken a lot of same. work to <laughs> lower that. And I know, yes, and, and when I got to know you, I understood yeah. why I felt that. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you would share with the, those who don't know the story, if you're open to sharing a little bit about that and we could talk about why we have those similarities <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, for sure. Um, I do have my guard up and um, it's interesting. I used to walk around with walls up and never let them down. Um, now I do, but only for the right people. I'm very cautious about who I let into my space. I feel that I am so focused and my priorities are so clear. You know, I'm my first priority, which might sound a little weird to people, especially the mamas out there um, who are like, what about the kids? Uh, but I learned a really long time ago that I can't pour from an empty cup. So I have to be good first. Um, and of course my family is, is second and, and everything else comes after. So yeah, my, but it, you know, wasn't always like this. I feel like that's a cliffhanger to everyone's story, right? It's like perfect and polished now. And, and my life is far from perfect and polished. Um, but it wasn't always like that. So yeah, I grew up, um, in a totally different world than the one I live in today. Um, I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains of the southwestern part of Virginia, and it was very, very teeny tiny town. Um, we lived in hollers, as we called them, and um, my family was very poor. We had no money. There was no running water in my house. There was an outhouse that we used for the bathroom, rain, snow, sleet, you name it. And um, I remember very often, you know, going to bed hungry or going in to open a cabinet and there'd just be nothing there, you know, maybe an old onion skin and a, a rotten potato. Um, and so it was tough, you know, and in those situations, much like you would expect, it was a very volatile environment. My father was an alcoholic and a drug addict, and my mother was a narcissistic bipolar um, human. <laughs> and it was tough. It was really tough growing up. My mother was very abusive physically and mentally, emotionally. My dad, I think, tried to protect us as much as he could, but they were constantly at odds, constantly fighting. So my home was full of domestic abuse. I never knew when things would um, explode. I just never knew it could happen at any minute. And so to your point earlier about being on guard, I've been on guard since as long as I remember, like I was, I was born that way. I felt like, you know, and, and it was just always a lot of uncertainty. And I, I know you can, can relate to this. Um, and I don't mean just like, oh, they would argue. I mean, my father actually shot my mother in front of me. He was trying to, to, to kill her um, and uh, tried to shoot me one time just to get out of uh, the way so he could get to her. So anyways, it was, it was very volatile, lots of pain, lots of death, lots of mental health issues growing up and um, wasn't easy. So I ended up um, getting out of that environment through, I just made the conscious decision. I thought I can't, I can't live like this. Um, I could see where my life was going and, and I just knew that I wanted to try to have more than that. And so I moved to Los Angeles and was here all by myself and was in the entertainment industry. I was a television host. I worked three jobs just to be able to support myself and take classes and figure out how the entertainment industry works and was sort of kind of getting into it and got really sick and um, ended up just hitting rock bottom. And I'm happy to go into that story if you want. Um, but got to the point where I was so unhealthy, so sick. I mean, I was overweight. I had cystic acne on my face, my neck, my back. Um, I was working at the time, as I said, as a television host and, and model. And so I wasn't getting any work because of how I looked. And, um, you know, this was when cellulite wasn't accepted and everyone was airbrushed and quote unquote perfect. So that was really hard. I managed to develop an eating disorder throughout all of this. Um, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, clinical depression, which I had suffered from for most of my life and ended up finding lumps in both of my breasts, which was um, the rock bottom for me. That's when I decided that I didn't want to be here anymore and that I had given it a good shot, but it was time for me to go. And so um, that night really was the last night of my life as I knew it and the first day of the life that you see me living now. And so we can talk a little bit about that if you want. I'm happy to go into any and, and all of this um, and kind of how I made it through. But yeah, I, I feel like sometimes we, some people have to hit rock bottom. I apparently did. <laughs> some of us don't. It's not a requirement for you to completely transform your life. Um, but that's a little bit about my my story. Happy to fill in any of the gaps that you want to go into. 
I was just sitting on the edge of my seat, you know, even though I know the story, having the privilege of getting to hear you tell it from start, you know, from a start point of your choosing and, and where you ended at is, um, yeah. you know, my stomach's clenched up. Um, I got sweaty mm -hmm. palms just hearing it. Mm -hmm. um, I got vertigo mm -hmm. at one point hearing the story because mm -hmm. I was putting myself back into my own stories and yeah. into my own traumas. And they are so real when you've like lived through this stuff you can't like i can't even right now i'm like moving my hair around i'm viscerally feeling uncomfortable and and i'm so sitting in that right now just feeling that and letting that move through my body because i want to like just say thank you for sharing your story and we all have a story that we have lived but what i've always found so powerful is that it's this frame that we get to tell the story through and see the story through that decides what's going to happen in our lives. And I love that point where you got to in your story where you said, okay, this is the day that I started to live the life you now see me in. And the way that you tell this story is, is very much through the lens of, you know, these, these are facts. This was the, these are the facts of my life. And the new fact is that I've started a different chapter. I'm in a whole new volume of yeah. my life. And that, that in itself is incredibly powerful. And you are such an amazing storyteller. When it comes to that, that reframing of things and the, our power that we have over how we tell our stories, um, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the things that helped you be able to tell that story differently? Or have you told that yeah. story differently in the past? Did the story mean different things, I guess? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the, the, the starting place, and, and thank you for, for that. I, um, it's a process and it's about progress, not perfection. You know, I started telling my story for my own good. Um, I, I didn't tell my story for a really long time too. Let me just back up and be totally transparent here. Um, I'm easy. It's easy for me to sit here and say it today. And, and by the way, it's not always easy. I still feel it too, just like you feel it. I don't know that, I don't know that that ever goes away. Um, and I still have, you know, post-traumatic effects. So even now, if I see my mother's name pop up on my caller ID, just like you, my palms are sweaty. My heart starts racing, my breath gets shallow, you know, I'm instantly in that fight or flight response. And so I didn't tell my story. Um, Re, when I got away, which is what it felt like I was doing, I was getting away and I moved to LA. I didn't tell anyone about my past. I didn't tell anyone about where I came from or how I grew up or that I was completely broke um, because I was, I was ashamed. I was really ashamed. Um, I was ashamed of some of the way I'd lived, of my parents, of the things that I had had to do, you know, in my life just to survive. And I thought, oh, I don't want to tell people that, you know, they're going to think I'm crazy. I'm a total freak. I won't have any friends. I didn't have anyone around me hardly anyway. And I thought if I tell them the real me, they're going to be so disappointed I'm, and I'm going to seem like a fraud and they can't relate to me. How could they possibly relate to, to, to me? Right. And so I didn't tell people the story. And what I realized was that's what led to me hitting rock bottom a hundred percent. And because you put it all, you packaged it all away inside yeah. of you. And yeah. what's so like just hearing about the, the acne that's like literally coming yeah. out of your body. Like it's str it's mm -hmm. this little like stuff that's like trying to get out of your body, developing lumps in your breast. It's like your body's trying to yell at you about mm -hmm. this, this internalized stress and actually creating masses that are, yeah. that are like the story or the, the pain and the trauma trying to get out. And that's we right. see this, you know, you as an amazing health coach and leader now in what you do. I mean, I know that one of the, one of my favorite things about what you teach, of course, is like the root cause. You you go into the yeah. emotional cause of what our health struggles really are. 
because the body yeah. keeps score. I love that book, but the body keeps score and the body tells okay. the truth. So your body yeah. was literally telling its story and you were, you were being forced to listen and um, yeah. found yourself trying to decide like, I mean, I guess you, you decided not to take your own life in that moment. Yeah. Thank goodness. But you know how, how? I don't even know how yeah. to, I don't know how to ask. Yeah. No, I you're you're right. You're you're so right on with all of those things. And and I'll 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 um kind of take you a little bit deeper into this. And remember, you know, I said I had short-term memory loss. I couldn't remember things. I was trying so hard to forget. Uh I I disowned who I was. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know that person. I just thought. If she would have walked through the door with me there at a party, I would have been like, I have no idea who that is. No idea. So you're right. All of these things manifested in, in very physical and mental ways. You know, my depression getting to the point where I was suicidal. And I remember, you know, I the way this all came about is I was in my little <laughs> studio apartment, one room in a bathroom in Los Angeles. And um I had been sick for very, for, for months and uh, had tried everything, literally everything. I used to scoff when people would say that because I thought, oh, really? You didn't try everything. Something would have worked. That's just silly. Uh, I believe it now because I've been in that position. But um, I got up that morning and I thought, okay, maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day when things are better. I felt a little better. I felt a little more clear-headed, had a bit more energy. And I thought, I'm going to get it together today. How many times have we woke up and said that, right? <laughs> Usually on a random Monday, <laughs> I'm going to get it together and get my life together. And so I got in the shower and I was showering, very optimistic, thinking about what I could do, get out, get some fresh air, go hiking, you name it. And uh, that's when I found the lump in my breast. And then I felt and I found a lump in the other one. And when I was growing up, Brie, my grandparents had this big old TV set that sat in the floor. <laughs> Back when TVs were these huge endeavors, right? They were huge and they had a cabinet around it and it took like five grown men to carry it in your house and you'd better put it where you want it because it was never moving again, right? It was just huge. And the cool thing about these TVs, I used to love this. When you would turn it off, it would black out and go down to this tiny little point of white light in the middle and it would sit there until that eventually faded too. And so that day in the shower, that's what happened. I just felt the black creeping in from my peripheral vision and it just went to this hole. And I remember just sitting down, I just sat down in the bathtub, the water's still coming. And I remember I just, I put my arms around myself and I just started rocking, just kind of, just kind of like you'd rock a, a child, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long I sat there, but I, the next thing I remember I was shivering, it was cold. And so I got out of the, the tub and I, put a towel around me and I walked in and I remember just sitting down and just staring at the wall. And that's what I did all day. And somehow I had worked my way into a corner on the floor, um, maybe because it was more comforting or safe. I'm not real sure. And it was the wee hours of the morning and I was sitting there and I had a handful of pills that I'd been prescribed um, over the last several months for different, different things, sleeping, you name it. And uh, a diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> in the other hand. And, and that was my exit strategy. And as I sat there, I thought, well, look, they can't say I didn't try. You know, my bank account had like a few hundred bucks in it. And um, my cabinets were full of all the stuff, the protein powders, the supplements, the energy healing, the, you name it. I thought, they'll see I gave it a good shot. And the more I started realizing like this was it, and I was so young and just looking at my life that had been filled with such trauma and tragedy at every single turn that was completely out of my control, I started to get really angry. And I started saying, why me? Like, what the, what the what, right? Why me? Why is, why are all of these like from birth, Brie? Why have all, and I started to get really angry and I'm crying, I'm sobbing and, and I'm, I'm mad. I'm, I'm mad at the, the people I went to to help me because they didn't and they said they could. I was mad at myself for, I thought, how was I so stupid? What was I thinking? Why did I come here? How did I think I could ever make a lie? Like, how did you get here? I was so mad. I was angry at God. I thought, what kind of God lets someone suffer their entire life only to have this 
be the way it ends, so angry. And I kept saying, why are these things happening to me? Why? What, what have I done? And um, it was in that moment that I heard this voice. And um, it wasn't like an external voice. That would have been way cooler. But it was this voice from inside. You know, we, we, we know. We, we, we know what's up. And um, this voice said, because it's, it's happening for you. It's happening for you. And I know people kind of toss that around now. I'd never heard it before back then, 17, 18 years ago. And um, I thought, well, for what? That like this. <laughs> and now I'm hearing voices and I'm talking back. So I think I have completely lost it at this point, right? Like this is, this, this is it. And then I heard this response that just said, you know, you're meant to do something really great. Now, that was crazy. Like if I thought I had hit a whole new level of crazy before talking to myself, this was a new level because I was no one from nowhere whose family, friends had said to me my entire life, you're nothing, you're trash, you're nobody, you're worthless, you'll never amount to anything. I had people in my life say, you should just kill yourself and get it over with. You're pathetic. So for me to hear, you're meant to do something great. It broke me open and it got my attention. And you know how like the last several years we've written these books with the F word in the title, right? F this, F that, zero Fs, nah, trying to use clean language. <laughs> Those are written in that way and, and titled that way. And we use that word because it catches your attention. It's a pattern interrupt, right? We're like, oh, you got my attention now. What were you saying? That's what happened that night. I was like, whoa, great, what, me? What I know is that that's true. And what I know is that we're all meant for greatness, 100%. And so I thought, okay. And I really, um, it's interesting, I kind of made a pact that night, uh, not with the devil. But I was like, if there's a God, it's just your last shot, right? This is it, this is it, and then we're done. Um, but I'll do the work, I'll show up. If you'll open the doors, I'll walk through them. And I made that deal, and I thought, if I can make it through this, I'll dedicate the rest of my life to making sure no one else suffers. No one else has to you know, tell themselves and believe these stories that they can rewrite their own history and create a great life. What if I could do that? What if I could do that? And what if that's the greatness I meant for was to make other people great? Other mm -hmm. people see their own greatness. And so that's where, um, that's why I say, you know, that's the night that, that this life that I live now began. That was my birthday. Um, and it's interesting because I have a story I can share about my birthday when I was growing up, if you want, that where I had decided that I was nothing, nobody, not special, I would never be important to anyone. And so this was my new birthday that meant the opposite of that. And that began my journey. And, you know, my first thing was, well, I got to heal my own body. If I can't even stay awake during the day and I don't have the energy to stand up, I can't help anyone. Right. So I got to do that first. And that led me down this path of nutrition, getting a new education, um, which then took me into this place that you and I were talking about where I realized it wasn't just physical, that food alone will never fix us, that it is these deep rooted causes and traumas that keep us stuck mentally, physically, spiritually and, will, and always will until we deal with them. These beliefs that we have about ourselves, regardless of even where they come from, because yeah. we've all experienced trauma, different amounts of it, different kinds mm -hmm. of it. Um, and without needing to compare your version of trauma to anyone else's, just understanding that the way that we are, the way that we tell ourselves our story, our experiences are creating the filter that we're seeing our life through. And it, it is what yeah. enables us to take the next step and the next step. Yeah. That's, I think, that's what is informing our decision making. That's what's informing, like how we. I always say how we. You know, like, it's not me, just me that says this. How we do one thing is how we do everything. Yes, right? it's, yes. it's it's everything. And so, yes. I think back to that young woman you were, and even the young woman I was before I broke through from yeah. feeling like a freaking victim all the time to yeah. feeling like this empowered. I'm. This is. I'm taking responsibility for myself from now on. And this is this stuff happened for me and it's going to serve me now because this is my life and I'm moving through it. And I, I just, I know that, that 
being able to do that, it takes, so there's this, this thing about integrity that I feel that the word, the word that's inside integrity is grit, right? If you look at the word integrity spelled out, grit is right there smack in the middle of it. <laughs> and girl, that is what you have and had. And that's why, you know, you are, you're so in integrity with, with your purpose, with why you're really truly here that you, you couldn't, you couldn't stop living. You know, you had to keep going because you had that grit and we have that grit inside of us. That's what helps us rise up and continue to go and we want to serve others because of it. Yeah. Back to nutrition in the body, because mm -hmm. th this is what you said you started with. You started to see yeah. yourself with, um, you know, that that was the first thing you needed to address. And then you realized, well, that's, that's that's just that's just a tiny part of it. There's yeah. all this these layers below it. You 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 mentioned this really. I don't even know where I read this, but you said um, that we have three basic needs. Yeah, human beings have three basic needs. That's right. Tell me what the three basic needs are and how that ties into how we're healing ourselves as we're going through becoming more empowered and making better sure. choices. Yeah, so we we do. We have three basic human needs, and this isn't Maslow's pyramid. <laughs> this is totally different. This is this is really integrative needs. Um, so I'm talking about physical needs, I'm talking about mental needs, I'm talking about spiritual needs, right? And so those three needs are to be seen, to be heard, and to feel that we matter. So to be seen, Bree, I see you, a strong woman who's overcome so much in her past who now has made it her mission to show up and serve others unapologetically, right? I hear you. I'm not just listening. Like I hear you. I hear you when you say that it's all this holistic view and integrated take when we look at health. I hear you when you say I can do anything. And that matters. You matter to me. Because in my darkest moments, it's your words I hold on to so that I can see the light again. I see you, I hear you, and you matter. And that, that frame, that integration that you just described, that's why it's never just going to be about nutrition. Right? That's right. It's gonna, that's right. It, we can start with addressing our physical body's needs because this right. beautiful vessel that we've all been given, which has the capability of it's so freaking resilient, right? Talk about the grit that this body of ours has, this resilience that it has, that it can go through so many amazing things, yeah. especially as women. <laughs> um, you know, and that nutrition is important, that we have to look at these physical aspects of life and of health, but that there's this deeper thing. And, and when it comes to our needs and how, yeah. if we don't identify what they are and identify the things that are the root of why we feel unworthy or why we feel unhappy or why we why, right. why we can't face our fears and our and our stories are are about you know why someone did something to us and not how we're doing something for ourselves yeah. it, it just we get we get so stuck and i when i heard i heard you talking about those three things the other day i was just so struck by just the I don't know just the how much i how much i love you and how much i feel connected to you because i i came up with this three A's that I've been teaching my team for the last four or five years. And they came out of a relationship I had with a guy that was, it didn't turn out to be a great relationship. And after it ended, I did some reflecting on what needs of mine weren't being met. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I didn't feel answered, appreciated, or acknowledged. I didn't feel mm -hmm. any of those three things. And yeah. I said, you know, when it comes to communication, those are communication issues. And those are also yeah. like, like issues of why people don't connect to each other deeply and, and why we don't right. even connect to ourselves. And so I, right. I, I, I said, how could I, how could I use these to serve everyone around me? And I said, I'm going to create the three A's. And so when we do mm -hmm. customer support or we talk to our audience online, we all are trained to hit at least two of the three A's because people yeah. need at least two of them in order to have like a really good experience. And we want to make sure mm -hmm. we are acknowledging and answering and appreciating people. And they, those three A's really strike me as very parallel to being seen and heard and listened to. I, sorry, yeah. seen, tell me, tell me the three seen. Yeah. Seen, heard and, and, and matter. Yeah. Matter. You're that right. That was the one, the matter. 
because the matter yeah. is like about acknowledgement. It's about, I, right. I acknowledge you, you know, like, and, right. and maybe like, maybe they don't match up exactly, but the fact that there's these in, in intrinsic things that are so important to us as humans in yeah. communication with one another and with ourselves too, like, yeah. If, if I don't actually hear myself talking and I'm just going through the motions, if I don't truly see myself or I want to see some other version of what I think I'm supposed to be, I'm not going to have a very good connection to myself or connection to other yeah. people probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you don't have a connection to yourself, you don't have a connection to anything or anyone. Um, and that that's the reality. And, and, you know, a lot of us are like, we go outside ourselves, right, to get that um, validation that we need. We want other people to see us. We want other people to make us feel like we matter. Mm -hmm. And so that's why at our own expense, sometimes we'll do things for other people. Even when you're sick, you're exhausted, you don't feel like it, you'll still show up and go the extra mile just to get that hit of dopamine that says you matter. You're important. Mm -hmm. You love to hear, gosh, you're such a good friend. You, you're the best or you're the best right? Um, we're hungry for that. And, and what you said about nutrition is so true. I think that it's time that we redefine nutrition. And I'm working really hard to do this. Um, this has been, you know, part of my life's work is to redefine nutrition as anything that feeds us physically, mentally, and spiritually, right? And, and this is the work we do at the Institute of, of Transformational Nutrition, which is a school that I founded after I figured out these three critical areas. And if you think about those three needs, they match up with those three areas. Um, this model is called transformational nutrition. Mm -hmm. I think this is the way we need to redefine it. So physical is I see you. I see this physical, white woman, uh, beautiful, healthy, fit, right? Um, hearing is the mental nutrition side of things, right? I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm processing. I'm thinking. I'm validating. You're worthy of me being present and actively listening, right? And then matter is about spirit, right? This is the spiritual nutrition side of things where, and, and by the way, spirituality for me is about connection. It's about relationship. Now that could be a connection to something higher. If you choose, that's great. That's environmental spirituality. Great. Um, but don't forget about personal spirituality, which is you were talking about is that relationship with yourself and communal spirituality, which is that relationship with others, right? So you matter. This is where mm -hmm. your purpose is. This is where you matter to other people. So it really forms this beautiful triad. And just like, you know, think about a stool has three legs. If one of them is missing, the stool falls over, right? Or if one of them is short, the stool is wobbly. And so without feeding yourself these three things every day, every hour, right? Constantly, um, you're a little bit off balance. And I think that's why we get thrown off into things like work-life balance, uh, no time for my family. I got no time for me, right? Because we're not actively making those three things a priority and then setting the intention to feed ourselves every day, you know? And so, so we feed ourselves food. We'll feed ourselves junk food because that fills these other holes that we're not feeding, but we can't fill those with food. We'll never feed, right. feed them. With I mean, food. We're, we're externalizing our own internal issue, right? Because 100%. when you talked about the, the giving yeah. of all of our time, just for the dopamine hit of someone else validating us and saying, you matter, that's chronic people pleasing. And we're not setting yeah. a good boundary because we haven't yet right. valued ourselves enough to say, I'm worthy of time and energy. I'm <laughs> going to give myself credit and I'm going to give myself some, some praise, you know, cause I, I, I made these choices. I'm responsible. Those are the things that I think are missing from a lot of the vernacular when it comes to being healthy. And yesterday I posted I posted an Instagram post. Let me just drop that <laughs> into the conversation. And because I in anticipation what? of talking to you, because in my my post said, you know, being healthy isn't just about what you're eating, it's about what you're thinking and saying as well. Yeah. And that to me is in a nutshell, you know, what when I think of you and I think about the Institute for Transformational Nutrition, going through those courses, I mean, it's that is what is at the heart of that. And that's what so sets it apart from anything I've ever seen is yeah. that you're also addressing the emotional aspect of our being. And, and that yeah. is such a rich place to have an opportunity to, to transform ourselves because everything stems from the way that 
you know, we feel. My, my slogan for the Betty Rocker has always been, you know, how we look and feel is a byproduct of how we treat ourselves because everything right. comes from how we choose to treat ourselves. So you're just so, um, I think you just, I, I feel like we're finally starting as, as a collective to have conversations about mental health on a greater yeah. scale. And I just, I feel like yeah. you were way ahead of your time when you created this institute because, you know, you, you were, you were holistically cap capturing all of these important aspects of what it means to be healthy. Yeah. And, um, and then of course we can apply food to ourselves. It's just one of the practices that we can yeah. apply. Yeah. Well, I think it came, you know, my, it all came from living and doing the work, right? It's not some idea that I researched. It was my life. And so when I realized that night on the floor, okay, things have to change. I thought I got to get the nutrition because that's all I knew. It's all I, I thought health, nutrition, food, that's all I knew. Yep. And so that's what I started studying. And, and even then had a bunch of aha moments like, well, this isn't, this doesn't make sense. But it wasn't um, until I was working with this, this client, um, we'll call her, call her Jenny. It's <laughs> not her name, but I kept working with her. It, it was, she was such an interesting woman, powerful in the entertainment industry. She had become a client of mine after I'd finished all of my tr nutrition training. And um, it was, we had this game that we liked to play. She would come in every week and we would put together a meal plan and she, I would, she would say she would follow it and then she would go away and she'd come back the next week and she hadn't. Just a little game we liked to play over and over and over and over. And so you ever have people catch you on just the right day? Oh, and yeah. Just like, not today, <laughs> Linda. Not today. Yeah. So Jenny came in that day, still not her name. And, and, and here she had her food log. And she had this thing with candy bars, Snickers bars, to be exact. Now, to her credit, she didn't try to hide this from me. She wrote it down every time. Breakfast, Snickers, lunch, Snickers, bedtime snacks wrote it down. And so what I said to her, cause right day, right time. Right. I said to her, I said, Jenny, I don't get it. Uh, every week you come in here, we talk about what you're going to do, what, it, how it's going to be different. We create this plan for you. You leave every other week, you come back and you haven't done it. And I don't get it. And I don't know how to help you because you're not helping yourself. And I said, at this point, you're wasting your money and my time. And she did something that changed everything for me. And no one has done this to me before or since, thank goodness, because it was interesting. <laughs> she stood up and she yelled at me and she went on, it, it broke her open. Something in her broke open. She wanted to be seen. She was writing down the Snickers bars for a reason. She needed to have this confrontation. She needed to share her story. She said to me, when I was a little girl, my mother got divorced and she started dating this man who didn't like children. And when he would come over, she would take me to Blockbuster Video back in the day when we did that. And she would help me pick out some movies and we would go and we would get candy. And my favorite were the Snickers bars. And she'd bring me home and she'd send me to my room. And I was to stay there with this candy and these movies until the man left. And then I could be back with my mom. And she said to me, this is love. I'm now, her words, the fat girl. And I poke fun at myself because if I don't, people will poke fun at me. And she said, these candy bars, they're the only love I feel and the only friends I have. And I won't let you take them away from me. And I was shocked. I know. I had the same reaction. I was like, I get chills even now when I tell this story. And she sat down in the chair and I had already leaned back because she had let me have it. And it was great. And we just looked at each other and she was breathing heavy and crying. And that's when I realized it's not about the food. This food, we are fed by so much more than food. And, and she needed to tell that story. And I realized the big role that stories had. And that changed my work forever. And I started realizing my own things, right? When I was young, as I said, we, I would often go hungry. And then when I got older, if there was food, I would eat it. I would eat it all. I would eat it all because I didn't know when I was getting food again. 
right? That, that, was, that was how I grew up. That was my trigger, my trauma. And um, obviously that's what led to eating disorders because I was like, well, you can't eat everything all the time, Cynthia, right? <laughs> You're going to be 500 pounds. And, but then I didn't know how to stop. And so that led to drugs to help me try to stop and curb my appetite. And that led into drinking and all of these other unhealthy habits. But it was just another awakening aha moment that, you know, created transformational nutrition, created that pillar of transformational nutrition. That's why it's called transformational nutrition, not <laughs> exactly. just Institute of Nutrition. Because right. <laughs> it, it, how we how can we transform our ourselves? And right. and you know, nutrition is is a vehicle for for change, for transformation. Yeah. There are many good ones. One of the things you just mentioned that I that made me think about something that I learned from you, which I love so much, and just I, I love so many things that you do, Cynthia. I just want to say that Aww. you you talk a lot about helping people figure out like their deeper why to help figure out why they do the things yeah. they do, yeah. and you have this great activity, and you know we all of any great coach knows that motivation has to come from a deeper reason than just what we think that we want, right? I want to lose yeah. 20 pounds. I want to, you know, look hot in my bikini. I mean, these are, these are okay to, it's fine to have those goals. I, I think, sure. Could, sure, have those goals. Those are part yeah. of the goals, but yeah. what's the, what's underneath your desire to look differently? Yeah. And so you have this wonderful activity. Would you tell us what it is and maybe take us through it? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I love that you're bringing this up because you know, we often think like, oh, I want to lose weight. And then we try this plan or we do your workouts, which are amazing, by the way. I love them. They reshape my body. Um, but then we fall off the wagon and we think, well, I just don't have any willpower. I can't do this. I'm hopeless. I'm, we, you know, we tell ourselves the stories and it, it is okay. It's okay to use vanity, use vanity all day long. If that serves you, it's just at some point there's going to be the food, the party, the drink, the, the the movie and the gallon of ice cream or whatever that's going to tempt you, right? There's going to be friends and loved ones and parties and reunions. And those are, are, you know, those are hard to say no to. And so what is that thing that's going to keep you going? So I write stories. It's, it's what I do. It's how I make sense of life. It's how I coach. It's how I help other people make sense. Like um, my client, Jenny, still not her name, um, who dealt with the candy bar issue. It all came out when she told me a story. And so stories are made up of something called layers, right? And so you start with like this basic story or this idea, and then you add layers on top of it, right? And these layers, they add depth to your story. They make uh, your story interesting. They make the character interesting, right? There's a, a plot twist that makes it really interesting. And we add layers to our stories all the time when we tell them, right? When we, when we live them, for example, you know, you're not just looking to lose weight for your, you know, example that you gave. You're looking for the deeper layer of meaning. Where is that layer? Because just losing weight is, eh, eh. But what does that mean? Does it mean that you're doing it and you want to lose the weight because then you'll finally be happy? Whatever your definition of that is. Is it that you're tired of spending the holidays alone? And if you lose weight, then you won't have to do that anymore. So, so what is that? So when you ask yourself, why, like, why do I want to lose weight? For example, you want to make sure that you go six layers down Peel, You got to peel back six of those layers, right. To get to what the main idea of your story is in the first place. So I'll give you an example. I'll walk you through this. So uh, you have a client and they say, I want to lose weight. Great. Why do you want to lose weight? Okay. So that's level one. And so well, I want to fit into my clothes. Great. Uh, why do you want to fit into your clothes? Okay, that's level two. Level three, well, so I feel more confident. Great. Uh, why? Why is that important to you? Why do you want to feel more confident? Uh, well, you know, so I can put myself out there more in, in my business. I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a coach. Uh, I, I want to be able to put myself out there more on level four. Wonderful. Why do you want to put yourself out there more? Because I'm tired of being the world's best kept secret. I know I have good stuff to, to, to share with the world. I know I can help people. I know I'm good at what I do, but I'm, I'm, it's frustrating. It's, it's, it's frustrating. It's painful. Great. Why 
Are you tired of being the world's best kept secret? Because I know that I meant for more and I refuse to die with this message inside of me. That's Boom. Layers, to have, right? <laughs> so here's the deal. Now, when you get invited to the party or the coworkers bring in the candy or it's pizza night or whatever, and you're tempted, you remember your bigger why. It's not so you'll look good in your bikini. That's a side effect, right? It's I don't want to die with this message inside of me. And that, therefore, I don't want that pizza. My message, my legacy is more important than that quick fix right now. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, girl. And and the yeah. fact that you just said quick fix, this is my favorite topic really of all because I feel like we're so, yeah. we're wired for pleasure, right? It, it's this, yeah. our brains are wired a certain way. We know this. We're wired for to, yep. to seek pleasure and avoid pain, right? That's, that's how it works. Yep. And it is not an easy thing. That's why I said grit is inside of integrity because it's not easy to go like, let's, let's focus again on the body as, cause we're talking about the body today. You know, when we want to create a healthy fit body that really for me, my goal, healthy fit body that stands the test of time. So I can live thriving into my old age and, and still be active, right? I, I want to yeah. set that stage for the future. Mm. It's not easy to go through those practices day after day, you know, because you, you sometimes you no. think, oh, I'm going to do this program and then I'll be no. done. No, it's an ongoing process. You're always in, you're always in practice of pursuing mm -hmm. these goals, um, and it's not just your physical goals. Maybe it's a business goal. There's a lot of different goals, relationship goals, but the the point is, it's not easy. And when you take the shortcut, yeah. when you take the the fast track, the go through the drive through. Um, fortunately, <laughs> what I see on the other side of that is that you are actually in the back of the line, having to start over, having to, yeah. it takes longer to get where you wanted to go yeah. in the first place. And that's what I hate to yeah. see because yeah. I just see so many fast fix diets that create more metabolic havoc than they solve. Yeah. Um, you might yeah. lose some pounds for a little bit, but they don't actually really have a long-term benefit. Yeah. And worse than that, they don't really address the root cause of what's going on with you. Yeah. So. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, it's about feeding those three areas of our lives, right? I mean, we can't just do the physical. If you look back at these six layers down, this exercise that we just did, this is emotional. It's mental for us. It is spiritual. This is our connection with ourself and our purpose, right? So that's what, that's what it takes to keep you going every day. And we can, I mean, look, motivational quotes are fun. You know, I've read uh, so many of them. I know you have too, like, uh, you know, being skinny tastes better than any food and all. And then that's, those are great. And, and if it gives you that hit in the moment and that encouragement that you need, that's awesome. But those only get you so far. Right? You have to dig a little bit deeper. And look, this is your, this is your life. Some people say, oh, I don't know if I want to do that exercise. That's scary for me. Well, the alternative to that is continuing to live a life where you loathe yourself and you're unhappy and you hold yourself to unrealistic expectations so that you constantly feel disappointed. So now you tell me which one feels worse. Yeah. Obviously feeling disappointed feels way worse. Right? Yeah. You can take control of your life. And I think that's, that's really, this is why I get so fired up when we have these conversations and it's why like it's your choice, you know, and I'm really clear, like my six layers down, like I, I know that I am here to inspire others to rewrite their stories by being an example of what's possible when I rewrote my own, right? That's right. I woke up the morning of my eighth birthday, Brie. I was so excited. I thought, oh my gosh, it's my birthday. <laughs> it's my birthday. Will I get a present? Um, will we get to drive down the old dirt road by my house and play in the Creek for a while? Uh, will I get a birthday cake? And we didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't expect much. Right. But I, I just, you know, birthdays are cool when you're a kid. That's yeah. a special day, right? That's let's celebrate you. It doesn't yeah. matter about the money. It doesn't matter about the things. And I thought I'm so excited. So I got up and I walked through the house and I still remember how my little bare feet felt on that just bare, the red bare carpet, black carpet. And I walked in and my mother was sitting there having her morning coffee and her morning cigarette. And there was no present. There was no cake. And I thought, well, that's okay. Okay. They're going to surprise me later. That's what's going to happen. Right. 
And so she didn't acknowledge me, kind of went through the day. And I remember going throughout the day, playing, fighting with my younger sister, you know, in the woods behind her house and constantly thinking, oh, it's now the moment. It's now the moment. It's now the time when they're going to say, you know, happy birthday. I get a present, whatever. And I'm trying to keep up the enthusiasm, but then it starts getting dark. And um, my mother says, you know, it's time to get ready for bed, blah, blah, blah. And then I get worried and I start to panic a little bit. And I have all these emotions and I'm like, oh my gosh, what about this? There's no time. What, am I, what about my Kate? What about, like, I mean, what am I going to? And so I blurt out to my mother. I say, well, do I have a present? And she looked at me so cold, dead in the eye. And she said, why would you get a present? And I said, well, well because it's my birthday. And I'll never forget this. Again, she looked at me dead in the eye. I saw her lip curl a little bit. And she said, so? And that's when my story was written. My stuck story. And it simply read, you're not special and you don't deserve anything, even on your birthday. And what? And, and you look at that three three things. You don't matter is what that said to matter. me. You don't matter. Yeah, I don't see you. I don't hear you. I hear it's your birthday, but I don't hear what that means to you. You don't matter. And that was my story, and and I stuck with it. And it took me years and years to rewrite it. And if I'm being really honest with you, there are still times where. You know, I was really lucky uh, last week. Um, it was a couple of weeks before that. I got a, um, the opportunity to do an article for Forbes to talk mm -hmm. about stuff. I saw. Stories. Congratulations. And thanks. I still had that trigger like, uh, me, I don't, this, do they want me to do it though? Like, I don't, you know, is it me? Same thing. Like, I work on um, Revenge Body with Khloe Kardashian. I remember even back to season one, or, um, season three seasons in now. It's crazy. Um, but they called and they said, hey, we want you to do this. And I thought, I'm like looking behind me, like me. Yeah, I still have those things. I still have that trigger from that story I told myself when I was eight years old. And I've done the work. I have written the. I've created the method for doing the work. But you got to show up constantly and remember who you are. Remember who you are, right? And so it's a process, and it's totally doable. But it was through that rewriting my story that I changed everything. And that night on the floor, I wrote a new story. As you said, I started a new chapter, right? Brand new volume. In, I in said volume because life. you're a big, <laughs> you got a lot, there's a lot that's happened in both of these volumes, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. When I hear stories like that, you, you think it's like a movie, you know, you think it's just, it's just <laughs> something yeah. that happened in a, in a highlight reel somewhere in a movie because that couldn't happen in real life. You know, yeah. people couldn't, you know, do these things in real life. And then I think about, I've, I've, th I've thought about this a lot in some of the neural feedback sessions and some of the, I've done mm -hmm. some past life regression work. Um, I've done some really cool things to help myself sort of try to find my place in all of the, the stories and all of the hardships that I've experienced yeah. and also have seen people I love experience, trying to understand like, and whatever it is that our beliefs are, I just think every living thing is here to grow and evolve, right? Yeah. And so what's so powerful, like whatever whatever it is that we believe about why we're here or how we're growing, if it's our soul that's growing, if we're growing through this life, there's just so many beautiful opportunities to to transform, to, to, to grow, and to also, um, through our own journey, to help reach our hands out and lift other people up in their stories and their journeys. Yeah. One of the things you said a minute ago about some of the things that you've done and doing the work, I've see, one thing I want to say that I see you do is surround yourself with other women who are strong and powerful yeah. and who you see and who see you back. Mm -hmm. You know, you do that intentionally. You, you mm -hmm. pull in those people to you. And that's, um, that's such a high, that's a high self value move that, that we do because we, you know, we, we aren't alone in this. We, yeah. we can be together. We're, we're traveling through this life school together and it's a journey, right? Yeah. I I just find um, I've been looking for answers and looking for ways to heal myself for years. I've tried. I I just want to keep exploring and and keep finding new ways to to 
look like, cause I'll think I've done the work. I'm, I'm better. I'm good. You know, I'm, yeah. I did all this EMDR therapy. I did all this neural feedback. I did okay. 40 years of Zen twice. I've done all these things. I've, I've continued to journal and I'm doing heart math and I'm like, but something will come up and I'll get triggered again. And I'll be like, yeah. okay, got to get back. Got to keep, got to keep doing that. So some of the things I do daily to like yourself, you know, having those strong women friendships, having women to call on around me, creating an intentional community of, of people who have my back and yeah. whose back I have. And also creating a community of women around me who I serve, who I want to be a leader for. And that keeps me really, really motivated. Like there's nothing that mm -hmm. motivates me more than thinking, okay, I want to show up for my people today as, as good as I can. So yeah. what is the work I need to do on myself to clear whatever I've got in my head, you know, and yeah. I see you do that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a process. And, um, you're right. I do very intentionally. Like we started this conversation, you know, by saying, um, I, I don't let people in easily and very, very particular, um, because my work matters to me. I know this is why I'm here. And I know that if I'm going to focus on that, I have to have the right people around me because I had the wrong people around me for so long. Right. And it kept me stuck. It kept me stuck where I was telling the same stories over and over, being a victim as, as opposed to being someone who, who I, I see what happened to me as a gift. I, I know that might sound a little crazy, not to me, um, but it's true. <laughs> well, no. yeah, we're on the same page, right? Yeah. I but know. everything from the, the, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, which started at just five years old uh, and, and so much healing has to be done around that. Um, but I see it as a gift because I learned grit and I learned resilience and I learned what it means to be strong. And I learned what it looked like to cut people out of my life when it wasn't serving me, right? Because I would get stuck in, in the work and I learned how to tell a new story and I learned why that was so important. So I do believe it's it, that these things are, are gifts. I think that we have to surround ourselves with the right people. Um, because again, we get stuck and, and I think we have to rewrite our stories. Like there's really five stories, five, um, uh, almost like characters, but they're really stories that we tell ourselves that, that keep us stuck. You know, mine, when I shared with you, um, that I, I wrote it and I very clearly remember thinking I'm not special. I don't deserve anything. I became the visionary victim that day. So mm -hmm. there's five, there's the, the powerful procrastinator. That's another one. There's the passionate perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the distinguished deflector, the one that says, Oh, you know, they can't take credit for anything. And then there's the prestigious pleaser, which you talked about earlier, being that people pleaser at our own detriment sometimes. And so there's only five and, and we are all writing these stories. We usually have one main one, which, you know, mine's the visionary victim. When I let go of victim though, man, the vision I have for the world I want to create for my daughter to live in, the vision I have for you, Brie, the vision I have for everyone in this world. Like I, I, I sometimes think to, if I could, if you could see the you that I see, you would be in awe of yourself, right? And so there's definitely these brilliant, beautiful sides to our story, but we got to let go of the other identity that we've created, like victim for me, right? Procrastinator for others, pleaser for others, deflector, right? And then we can step into the other part of that and choose a new identity to allow that to serve us. Does that, does that make sense? Is that too? No, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I can see now why you've gone, you know, after creating this incredible, you know, the Institute for Transformational Nutrition, which yeah. serves health coaches, you then took a deeper look as I happen to know you took a deeper look at what else do people need? And you've now created a new um, way to serve people because there's a new thing that they need, which is what you're yeah. just talking about right now, how to rewrite those stories. And that's yeah. amazing. I, I actually didn't know what the five were, so I was really glad to hear mm -hmm. them. And uh, I, I, I took your quiz. And Did you? What are yeah, you? I actually, I couldn't finish it because I, I couldn't <laughs> self-identify on some of the ones. I was struggling with it. Does that, what yeah. does that mean? <laughs> just means there's more work to be done. <laughs> yeah. It just, just means you're a details person and you like to get things right. If, if I were to guess, I would say you're the perfectionist. That was um, my instinct for yeah, sure, because yeah. um, that, that's, that tends to be, to be me. And, and also yeah. I, I think that there's truth in all of them. 
right? For all of us, because totally we're and dynamic we live them all at different times, right? That's the other thing. We have one core one, but we live out the others from, from time to time right. too, at different points in our lives, but it's about rewriting them. And you start with the main one, because yes, you might be the perfectionist, but remember the qualifier for that uh, is passionate. Right. Sure. And, and look, but look at, look at how I couldn't even take the quiz because I was such a perfectionist about, you know, you, you nailed which one I was by the fact that I said I couldn't finish the quiz, right? Because I'm like, oh, they, the answers weren't perfect. So I couldn't yeah. do the quiz, right? It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, but that keeps you stuck because if you, you got stuck on just the quiz, right? Uh, imagine how that would keep people stuck in all areas of their lives. Right. I want to do the business, but gosh, I got to get this logo right. The color has to be right. The I got to get my what do I do statement just dialed in. Um, I got to get the workout exactly right. I can't start this diet on Monday because I haven't gone shop. I don't have the recipes pulled together. Right. I didn't have a chance to do the meal planning. I got to have it perfect. I don't have the workout. I want those shoes that Brie is wearing. I got to get the, they didn't come. I ordered them on Amazon. They're not here. I guess I'm going to have to wait another week because I can't start on Tuesday. It's got to be my... That is, and you know, those, what is it that, you know, our greatest, our greatest strengths come from our greatest weaknesses, right? So That's I, right. I think probably right. because I have always had those tendencies, some of the greatest offerings that I've been able to, to give to my, my tribe are things like all or something. It's not all or nothing. They're the things That's I've right. had to give to myself in mm -hmm. order to be able to go, I mean, I, I'm not someone who is a practicing perfectionist if I've been able to build the <laughs> empire that That's I right. built. I mean, I can see those tendencies in myself and I watch myself reframe the story I'm telling myself right. so that I can continue to push through and and p put something out there. You know, I, yeah. I've been creating content with an iPhone for years. Yeah. Because yeah. didn't have to be perfect, just had to yeah. get happening. You but know, that's where the other side of your story comes into play. That's your passion, right? That's right. Procrastinators are so passion, and that's your descriptor. It's your, your stuck story is two parts: your descriptor, right? That's one, and then the other is your identity. Procrastinator. That's the identity. Now, understand that your identity. Wait, how does perfection and so procrastinators in perfection as well? Um, I got confused. Yes. Sorry. Did I say, did I get them confused? Yeah. So you're, you're the perfectionist, right? Right. So for you, it's passionate. That's your descriptor. It's describing the essence of who you are at your core. You have passion and these descriptors are what kind of save us from the other part, which is our identity. So perfectionist is your identity right? So we've got a descriptor, you've got an identity. And I want to be careful here to say that, you know, just because like when I say identity, we're not describing you as a person. Like I wouldn't say you are like a, uh, a perfectionist, right? But rather it's a personality that you've taken on through the stories that you've told yourself. And as Dr. Joe Dispenza loves to say, your personality creates your personal reality, right? So this is just an identity. Now, the cool thing is identities can be changed, but the descriptor, that's the core of who you are. So the reason you're able to get past the perfection and still put out great content is because you have this passion that's driving you. And the other thing that you said that you've done is you've consciously rewritten those stories, right? You've had to get out of your own way. You've made that happen consciously. And you had that passion. Why? Because you had the passion driving you, right? Sure. And, and that's how it works. Just like me, you know, my identity is a victim. Now that's not who I am. It's just the identity that I assumed when I wrote this stuck story, but that creates my personality. So it creates my personal reality. But the reason I've been able to do the work that I've been able to do, in addition to rewriting my story, why did I rewrite my story to begin with is because I'm a visionary. So remember when I was rock bottom on the floor, the thing that got me up that night, the thing that made me put the pills down and stand up and walk away and start writing the first words of the new chapter of my new volume of books, as you call it, is the vision that I had. It was vision that I could create something, that I was meant for something great, that I could help other people, right? So we got to pay really careful attention to this to description, understand the identity, rewrite it, and then through rewriting it, you get to choose a new identity. And that's the magic of this mm. work. It's like alchemy. You're doing alchemy yes. on the soul. It's transformational. <laughs> it's transformation. It's beautiful. It's like the best word of the interview. <laughs> the best word. And I, I love that because what we what we're talking about right from the beginning was the frame that we choose to see life through. Well, <laughs> what you've right. given us this gift of with the identity is a frame that we didn't even realize we were choosing to see things through. And when we can yeah. identify that 
as a frame, then we have the power to create a new framework for ourselves, you know, right. re reinvent it, reinvent it so that it has many colors and it's however we want to see it and yeah. still have that driving force behind it that serves us and serves our, our mission here. It's, it's beautiful. And that's, that's the work that you're doing now, right? You're, you're, you're yeah. doing that more deeply. You're working, are you working one-on-one -on -one with people? How does, how does that show up for you? Yeah, yeah. So right now, like the this whole assessment, it's not not a personality type, by the way, and um, not a personality quiz. It's it's more of an archetype. It's it's mm. a story. It's your story, um, which people don't really talk about a lot. But I want to make sure that clear that it's definitely your story. So you start with the quiz, and then I created. Um, you know, I've been a coach for a long time, and one of the things that I've realized is not everyone can uh, has the resources to sit down and work with me one on one. Right. Um, and so what I wanted to make sure everyone could do is to rewrite their story, empower themselves and really create this new future. And so after they get unstuck. And so I created a self coaching method oh, awesome. and it's all free. It's on my website. You can go, you take the quiz to find out what you are. You download this free coaching method is a self coaching method. And I walk you through step by step by step by step how to rewrite your identity or how to rewrite your story, choose a new identity and then make that come true. How you live every single day to make sure that comes true. And this is what I spoke with Forbes about. Um, so I just, I, I feel like I need to just give this back for now, you know, to, because so many of us need it. And um, some of us may not have the resources to, to invest in that, but you know, I came from nothing. Uh, I didn't have the money to hire someone to help me rewrite my like what <laughs> what, is it? what? Um, and so I remember where I came from I, I want to make this available to everyone I know what that feels like so so that's what's happening there and then the plan is you know to, to continue to grow it we incorporate it in the work we do at the Institute of Transformational Nutrition so our coaches can go out and coach people on on getting through that um, I would almost think it would be like a prerequisite to be a coach like that would be something to do because to yeah. be a great coach we need yeah. to work on our own stuff first which clearly you have done for so many years yeah. and this is why you were able to create not just a coaching program but an actual coaching institute for coaches to be a part of yeah what you've yeah. created now sounds like like I, I said before a piece that anyone would want to take before becoming That's a coach right. I absolutely love how those sort of you know work together. Yeah. No, that, that you're right. That that's honestly how the work came about. Um, because, you know, I was, I was educating all these coaches, training, certifying all these coaches and, you know, our coaches are so successful. They go out, they have, we teach a lot of proprietary methods. Like, mm -hmm. um, we teach the transformational trauma technique because mm -hmm. we've been talking about trauma a lot, but how do you release that? Um, a lot of our students call it 10 years of therapy in just 10 minutes. <laughs> so they learn <laughs> these proprietary methods and techniques that no one's seen or used. And so they, they end up being very, successful, which is great. And, and I want that for them and they help a lot of people. Um, but what I would see is that even they would sometimes get stuck, you know, and then the more I've grown the business, I've been really fortunate to be in rooms and in groups with very powerful female leaders who run amazing companies and work for amazing people and with amazing people and just serve millions and millions all over the globe and realizing that sometimes even they get stuck. And it's this one thing, the stories that we keep telling ourselves that keep us stuck, that hold all of us back from our greatness, right? And so I thought, man, if, if we can't get out of our own way, we can't move, like we can't move forward. We can't lead others in moving forward. So this is crucial. I, I have to like, and people would say to me, like, how did you come from where you came from to get here? How did you do that? How did you, why didn't you get stuck like that? And I would say, let me tell you, I rewrote my story. And so that's where this work all came from that was sort of the, the genesis of it and, and why I think it's so just so critical. So funny how sometimes we, you know, you've done all this empire building and done all these things and then you came back to this at, and this yeah. is, but this is like the heart of everything. So I think yeah. if people are just finding you now through me, you found Cynthia at the perfect time <laughs> in your own journey because she's got it all. You know, you've got everything. And I love um I love your site and it's I am I am Cynthia Garcia.com. Yeah, the website is just Cynthia Garcia.com. Just like it sounds. Oh, it's your Instagram. I am Cynthia yeah, Garcia. All my socials. I love it. I am, I am Cynthia. Cynthia. Garcia. Yeah. I am Cynthia <laughs> Garcia. But yes, yeah, Cynthia Garcia.com yeah. to to take Cynthia's quiz and to um 
connect with her more. And you can also find links to check out the Institute for Transformational Nutrition if you are considering a health coaching career. Um, that is really my top recommendation for where to go for really just holistic, the, the kind of tools that you would want to have, the kind of tools you would want your own coach to have for you. And and if you have a health coach, maybe you want to ask them, hey, maybe you want to re-up your cert. <laughs> if, this isn't, if this yeah. isn't a career for you, maybe you want to recommend that to someone that you know, because it is an amazing program. Yeah. And we, we do things um, quite, a, quite differently. We also offer a live coaching certification as well. So, so we structure our course different than anyone else. Um, when you enroll, it's, it's really interesting because we'd have, you know, you've heard people say, oh, got to pick a niche, got to pick a niche, got to narrow down, got to focus. Um, but no one really teaches you how to do that. You're just supposed to choose one from the ethers and kind of go with it. <laughs> uh, so what we did was we created this model called passion-based learning. And so you go through all of our core training program where you get all these really great proprietary coaching tools that I've told you about. We actually invented a system for coaching that creates protocols. And so you don't have to, you don't have to like have all the answers. We do it for you based on what your client tells us. It's this whole system that does the work for you. But anyways, when you get near the end of the program, you get to declare a major. So after you go through the core training, you declare a major and you can major in or specialize in, you know, hormones, uh, weight loss. You can specialize in autoimmune disease or um, holistic health, life coaching, mental health. You can become a mental health coach. And that really allows you to be seen as a specialist. So essentially you walk away with two certifications in one and you become more of a specialist as opposed to just sort of a general uh, family doctor. Not that there's anything wrong with general family doctors, but you know, I mentioned before our successes are, are our coaches are really successful. This is one of the reasons why is because they really stand out in a sea of coaches. Right. And so um, it's just a really cool model where, again, everyone gets fed. A lot of us come to this because we've had our own health issue, whether that's trauma. Like for me, if I were taking the course, I'd probably go into the mental health coach certification at the end of, of my core certification because that's that's my story. Right. Some of us suffer from autoimmune disease or hormonal imbalance or digestive health. So go and be a digestive health coach. So it just allows you to really do what feeds you, right? Like we talk about transformational nutrition and we preach it, but we also live it as well. That That's a crucial part of what we do. Yes, a bad going back to the integrity piece and how we do one thing is how we do yeah. everything, right? That's super, <laughs> that's super right. That's important. Right. Uh, I, I can't- that. You know, I, I say that all the time. I love that you say that too. Yeah, be, well, because we're two peas in a pod, <laughs> Cynthia Garcia, that's what we are. <laughs> um, same person. <laughs> yeah, I love you when you say that, it's so cute. I can't thank you enough for your generous heart and time and sharing all of your stories with us and, and especially your um, reimagining of your stories and how to do that mm -hmm. and your generous heart and this incredible contribution that you're making to the world at large right now with your mm -hmm. course, with your free course and all of the material that you continue to put out and pour into your students. Um, just thank you for everything that you do and everything that you are. I, I see you, I hear you, you matter, you're amazing. And uh, I'm so proud to call you a friend. So. Yeah, likewise, thank you. Thanks for having me and sharing me. I know that you don't just put anyone on either. I know you're protective of your people. I've seen you in action. So it's a real honor to sit down with you and to just share and have an open heart with with your audience and the people that, that you serve. I don't take that lightly. Um, and I see the work you do and it's, it's next level. So yeah, just always happy to be in the room with you. Ditto, sister. All right. <laughs> so we're going to have lots of links for you to check out on the show notes page so you can connect with Cynthia, get her free quiz, and check out the Institute for Transformational Nutrition. Perhaps you've thought about becoming a health coach or just looking for someone who's trained in this way, or you'd like more of Cynthia's magic and insights. I've got all the links. Just hop on over to the bettyrocker.com backslash podcast to get all the resources we mentioned in today's show. And thank you so much for 
for listening. And as always, feel free to share this with a friend who you think it will benefit to listen. We are such complex, beautiful beings and have so many facets that make us tick. So I just love these opportunities to connect with you and and share the spectrum of these important topics and how they all interconnect with each other. That's why next week, I'm really excited to introduce you to Kanae Corder, nationally certified counselor and clinical hypnotherapist. She's the CEO of Presidential Lifestyle, a wellness company focused on wealth in all of its forms. And we're going to get into some conversations around the American dream and some paradigm shifts that I know you're going to find fascinating and insightful. Can't wait to see you there. And until next time, I'm Betty Rocker, and you are so awesome and amazing. I'll talk to you again real soon. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Brie Argett Singer, Betty Rocker Inc., and the producers disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. Before starting a new exercise, fitness or health protocol, or if you think you have a medical problem, always consult a licensed physician.